Welcome back, everybody. Well, I was browsing around YouTube looking for something to do a reaction video to today. And this showed up in my recommended. It's called The Lost King. Now, I haven't watched the trailer yet. I don't know if it's coming out in theaters or on TV or Netflix or some other streaming service. Uh, but apparently, uh, and just kind of doing a little digging, it is about the discovery of Richard III's body in that parking lot in Leicester a number of years ago. So I thought, wow, I had no idea they were making a movie about this. And I know the story of the actual archaeological dig and what happened, but I don't know the backstory about what happened before that. So I don't know how much of that they'll get into uh, or whose perspective they're showing this from. Uh, but I thought we'd watch the trailer. I'll maybe kind of break down anything I recognize or, or kind of know about. And then we'll talk just briefly at the end about the actual events that happened and, and how that all came about. And I'll probably do some kind of a review after this movie comes out because I'm definitely excited to see this if it's something that's even going to be available here. Last thing, uh, at the end, I'm going to throw up a link to um, the trailer that I just came out with this morning uh, about my upcoming series from the Battlefield of Antietam. First episode will be coming up in a couple of days. Uh, and that features not only myself, but my friend JD from the History Underground, who's doing his own series from Antietam. And they're going to kind of be interweaving with each other and um, telling some parallel stories and different parts of stories. Uh, so we kind of collaborated on that. You'll also see uh, Gary Edelman from the American Battlefield Trust, who we spent some time with while we were there. So please check that out when you get a chance. But let's go ahead and dive into The Lost King. The Lost King, the starring Lost. Sally Hawkins and Steve Coogan. Watch the trailer now. A very competent and valued Philippa, but I've decided you are a... Okay, so this is Philippa Langley. Now, I've only seen her as a blonde, but... Maybe she looked differently before that. But Philippa Langley is a member of the Richard III Society, which is the society that believes very strongly that Richard III has been wronged by history, that he was actually a very noble guy. He was a great king. Um, but, you know, Tudor propaganda destroyed his reputation and turned him into this evil tyrant who murdered his nephews uh, and took the throne. Uh, and are out to kind of rewrite that and, and tell the real story. Now, I think the truth is probably somewhere in between their side and the Tudor side, but uh, she's one of the driving forces behind them finding Richard III. At the right level for you. Are you actually reading from an HR manual? No, no. What would improve things at work? A penis. You can have mine. It's not really busy these days. Mom, what are you doing? You're coming to the theater with me. My kingdom! Edinburgh. Oh! I actually felt quite sorry for him. I'd quite like to visit his grave. There isn't one. Whoa, 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 whoa! I was about to say something and then I saw a familiar oh. face. I actually felt quite sorry for him. I'd quite like to visit his grave. That's Bruce from Scottish History Tours. I'm sure that's Bruce. Oh, I gotta look this up real quick. Yeah, totally him. That's Bruce. Scotland History Tours. Fantastic channel if you're interested at all in the history of Scotland. He's got a very unique way of presenting the stuff, but he's fantastic. He knows what he's talking about. He's a good storyteller. He's got the accent, of course. And, and he, he kind of does on-site um, historical content where he visits places around Scotland and shows you what happened there and tells you the story behind it. It's great stuff. I highly recommend it, but holy cow. So I don't know if she actually knew him or if they just are using him uh, in the movie as an actor. Either way, it's very, very cool to see him show up in that trailer. So um, yeah, so I didn't realize that she lived in Edinburgh. Uh, so apparently it looks like a lot of this is going to take place there. But the reason I was starting to pause, and that's a very unflattering look of Bruce that I'm pausing on there, so we'll skip uh, ahead, uh, is, you know, it shows her going to the theater there. And I don't know if that's ac actually what happened where she saw a play about Richard III and that's what inspired her to go down this rabbit trail. But I could totally relate to that. You know, it, it's sometimes seeing a TV show or a movie or reading a book that can inspire a lifelong obsession. You know, my obsession with the American Civil War began with a miniseries that came out in the 1980s. Uh, and uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the Civil War documentary by Ken Burns. And that led to literally thousands of hours and multiple trips in my life, all because I watched something on TV. So I totally get it. <laughs> Do you have any books on Richard III? We have eight titles. I'll take them. Which ones? All of them. 
all of them. I know you're some sort of apparition. I've been trying to work out why you're here. So Richard III's like walking around with her. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if it's because you're lost. I know I can find him. Who? Richard. Richard who? Sorry, uh, the third. The king. <laughs> yes. Huh. Is this starting to look like an unhealthy obsession? You know what? It's sometimes obsessions that make things happen, right? Somebody gets obsessed with a topic because, you know, listen, people have studied Richard III for 500 years. People have told the story. People have, have even done research into it. But nobody has put all the pieces together and found him. It takes a kind of a unique, obsessive type personality. Somebody who's willing to go further than anyone else. Who's willing to dig deeper. Who's willing to spend the time to take all the scattered pieces and put it all together that can figure it out and unsolve, you know, unlock a mystery. Well, I can't believe you just said that. I'm doing this for you. Plenty have tried and failed. Well, I wish you the best of luck. How can you possibly find... Oh, that's Mons Meg. This is Edinburgh Castle. I was just there not too long ago. Massive, massive cannon. And as you can see, an incredible view. Paint it on your own. The key is in the city archives. All the information I need to find him, well, it's all out there. But I don't think anybody's brought it all together before. There you go. If your research is accurate... He's now that was Mark Addy, um, Bru uh, Robert Baratheon from Game of Thrones. He was uh, Friar Tuck in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Uh, oh, that's cool. So they got some big names in this thing. Right in the middle of a car park. You tell me the what R. that letter represents. Just means reserved. Of course. Of course it does. <laughs> that's literally where he was, was under that R. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Of the strongest feeling, this is a very important historical site. A feeling is what you get when you sit on a bus seat that's still warm. I will fight you all the way on this. I want to dig for Richard. It's the body of an adult male. Boys, you... That actually looked like the real woman that was involved in this. Let me look. It's the body of an adult... I think that's legit her. It's the body of an... It, if it's not her, it certainly looks just like her. Adult male. Boys, your mother's just found Richard III. Yes! And I'm here today to tell you a story about a person who is judged unfairly in life. She's talking about herself or Richard? So... Now, I will not go as far as the Richard III Society and say that we've gotten it completely wrong about Richard III. But I also agree that the Tudors definitely had an agenda, definitely had a spin they wanted people to believe. And so they definitely made him look as bad as possible. I think the truth is probably in the middle somewhere. Richard III was uh, a king who did some terrible things, but not uniquely terrible compared to other monarchs of his time, um, just remembered as more so. And the fact that he was only king for two years and was the last of the Plantagenets for 300 years um, certainly makes it harder for people to have an accurate view of him because it changed dynasties violently. And the dynasty that took over had plenty of reasons for making him look bad and illegitimate and evil. Um, so let's talk a little bit. That first of all, that looks great. And let me see w what's it going to be on. Sorry, Graham, I can't help noticing your hair. It, it looks a lot like Richard. Graham Plant. Graham Plantagenet. Yes. So it's actually going to be in cinemas. I'm guessing maybe only. Uh, it's it's produced by the BBC. It looks like. Um, Maybe not going to be airing here, but hopefully it'll come out at some point on some digital format so I can watch it. I definitely, definitely want to watch that. But let's talk a little more about what really happened. 
So the Battle of Bosworth fought in August of 1485, and uh, there is a Bosworth Battlefield Heritage Center. There's a battlefield you can visit there. Now, there's been some question as of late about whether or not that's the actual site or whether it might have been a couple of miles away from there, but generally in this area is where the battlefield takes place. And the nearest kind of major city then is the city of Leicester. Uh, just to put this in perspective, it's right there in the center of England. It's an area called the Midlands. Uh, of England. And so Leicester's the kind of the major city. Uh, and so there were different stories. Some people said that Richard III's body was thrown into a river. Some people said he was buried in a place of honor in the Greyfriars Church there in Leicester. Other people said that he was there, but then his bones were eventually destroyed when the monasteries were destroyed, things like that. So nobody really knew for sure. Uh, but like they say in Indiana Jones, right? Um, 90% of archaeology is done in the library, and so it's a matter of putting all the pieces together. And so if you're going off the premise that he is indeed in that Greyfriars church, well, you got to find the church because it's not there anymore. So that's where you take maps, and you take old maps that you have that show you where the church was, and you got to try and line them up with the city map as it exists today. And then typically what they have to do is they've got to start digging trenches. And once they have an idea of a site, you dig a couple of parallel trenches and you look for walls like this. And if you can line those walls up with what you expect to see on the map, now you know where you are within the church compound. And you would expect someone like a king, an anointed king like Richard III is gonna be buried in the choir, the place of honor. Um, so that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the choir. And so they start digging and they start putting these trenches in and the, like the very first trench they put in, they stumble upon a body. And as they start excavating the body, they realize that this guy's got scoliosis, really bad scoliosis. Now this comes, Philippa Langley's there and, and you can actually see some um, you know, of the documentary of her standing there. And when they show her the spine, she goes, no, no. Because the Richard III Society, or at least people like Philippa Langley, they were convinced that that whole hunchback, withered arm thing with Richard III was Tudor propaganda, that he didn't really have any of that. Well, it turns out he did. And it actually ended up being one of the key pieces of evidence to help them in figuring out that he was indeed that that was indeed Richard III's body. So they find his body. They start finding all this other stuff. They find other graves besides just his. Uh, and so here's like uh, kind of a computer rendered model of what that church in that area would have looked like at the time. And they even think they have an idea of what his, his original tomb would have looked like. And he was buried underneath there. And there is the body of Richard III laying there. And you can see that severe curvature in the body, uh, in the spine. Uh, and that was a key piece of evidence. The, the wounds on the body were consistent with battle wounds as well as uh, wounds that showed post-death uh, trauma, uh, even to the point where they were able to figure out that somebody had shoved a dagger in his butt, uh, probably when he was slung over a horse when they were bringing him into Leicester. Um, they did research, figured out that this guy was probably in his early 30s when he died, which is perfectly consistent with Richard III. Uh, that he was about 5'8". He was a slim guy. He had adolescent onset scoliosis. He died with 95% probability between 1455 and 1540. So all of that, including the scoliosis, points to Richard III. He's in a place of honor in the church where it was said Richard was buried. So it all comes together. But, you know, there's always that doubt. So DNA comes into it. And so they look for somebody who's going to match his mitochondrial DNA, which is only passed down through female lines. And they find this guy in Canada named Michael Ibsen, who is a, I think he's like a woodworker, a cabinet maker, something like that, carpenter, and uh, his DNA matches. So, I mean, everything lines up. All the evidence points to this being Richard III. Uh, so Michael Ibsen actually got to make the coffin. They had a whole burial service. They reburied him in the Leicester Cathedral, where he rests today. Um, none other than people like Benedict Cumberbatch, who's a distant cousin of Richard III, read a poem at the uh, burial service. I think there was even, uh, I think Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, who's a cousin of the of Queen Elizabeth II, um, and Richard III was originally the Duke of Gloucester, also attended on behalf of the royal family. So it was a big, big deal, all because some random lady became obsessed 
And that just goes you to show you the power of never giving up and the power of pushing when you're sure of something until you find evidence to the contrary that you keep pushing your theory. And in her case, it helped with one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries of all time. It's so cool. I'd encourage you to check out some of the documentaries about Richard III and his discovery. It's really cool to watch it all unfold. They show the whole process. They even did facial reconstruction on the skull, uh, and it matched up perfectly with images of Richard III. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, as I mentioned, definitely check out Scottish History Tours, great channel. And I'll throw up a link right now to the trailer uh, for my new series about Antietam. I hope you check it out and I hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching.